What's good, family? Shout out to my boss man, Wes Andreas, for booting up your man, the YB coin. So, Richard Reactpour, the smoked Lil Toonchi's pack for him. Yeah, Reactpour versus Lil Toonchi. Now, fair play to Reactpour. Some people have implied that he's one dimensional. Yeah. Listen, it's a, a right hand's a great dimension to have, as Deontay Wilde has proven. People say, that whole cliche, AJ came out of a few years ago. Oh, uh, a right hand will take you around the block, but a jab will take you around the world. Listen, no balls will get you losing against middleweights. How about that for a rhyme? Yeah? But like I was saying, it's better to have something than have nothing. Like Mr. Johnston, a big weightlifter. And don't get me wrong, he ain't an accomplished weightlifter. That's what he is. Anyway, back to this fight. Back to Reactpour versus Lil Toonchi. Now, like I said, there were some murmurings that Reactpour was one-dimensional. Whatever way you want to cut it, one-dimensional tonight he was not. He came out on his boxing thing, and that Lil Toonchi, I mean, he came out like a, a knockoff pressure fighter. Not much volume, but he was applying pressure. He won the first round. Reactpour came out. It wasn't a scoring jab. It was almost just touching it out, touching it out. Not doing much. What we'd call boxy today. Two twos out of nowhere. I think the Lil Toonchi stepped in with that applying thing, applying pressure. When you got a high guard, when you're coming in like this, naturally your elbows, there's a gap underneath your elbows. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it was a counter punch, whatever it was, the dude stepped in and Reactpour matched him, stepped in with it and whipped a, a left uppercut and it clipped him right on his liver and it folded him like a cheap knockoff deck chair, a moody deck chair. Yeah, simple as that, that's all she wrote. Now, he actually beat the count, but the corner, I mean, I'm not sure what I think about the corner work. I mean, to some extent, oh, some people were praising the corner. Oh, wow, the best corner ever. The corner saved him. This corner was great. Me, I feel like... Mm. At sport, you might know me. In my opinion, you're supposed to go all in or don't bother. Was he all in tonight? Was Lil Toonchi in all in tonight? His team didn't let him. It's not his fault. He actually made the count. And... Uh, I'm not going to sound critical, but it was only a body shot. We know body shots for the most part. I've never heard of someone dying from a body shot. So, I guess his team was scared that he was still. When he was still, because actually, after his team threw the towel in, he made the count, the team threw the towel in. After that, he actually sat back down again. And I've obviously not boxed nowhere near to the level they have, but the little boxing I've done, I've been caught with a, a liver shot before, and they are. It's nothing quite like it. Delayed reaction. <laughs> it's nothing, and that and that was in 16 ounce gloves, and that wasn't against a, a pro professional like React Poor. So I guess, but then again, he's trained. You train to take body shots like that. And what's that saying? All in a, all in a day's work, yeah. You go swimming, you get wet. You go boxing, you get licked to the body. Suck it up. His team, they were caught on the cautionary side essentially saving him for another day but it's borderline for me if you're gonna at what point do you not save someone for another day it's kind of like well what's the why not why bother yeah if you if your first instinct is to save someone for another day stay at home isn't it? it's like what are we do are we having a fight or we're not if we're having a fight let's have a fight at least let the natural thing conclude i guess obviously their court his corner was thinking listen He's still half impaired and we don't want him going spark out and losing brain cells for nothing. I get that. But like I said, there's got to be some sort of balance here. Otherwise, what's the point? If the, I mean, the first sign of trouble, okay, we've been hit with a body shot. Let's call it quits. It's kind of like one shot. And it was a great shot, but still. Is that what we're saying now then? Are we saying that the minute one decent shot goes in, we don't want no more? If that, I mean, if, if that's the remit, fair play. More power to whoever that is. If the, if the new remit of boxing is the first decent shot that lands, we call it a day. So be it. Yeah? Because that's the game that Anthony Johnson plays against Usyk. The first time he got pops in the mouth, he ain't want no more. And that seems to be a recurring theme. Canelo Bomelo Alvarez. The first time he gets it put on him. 
Yeah, Pomelo had been putting on people for years, loving it, enjoying it. Yeah, when he bust Billy Joe Sausage's eyes, he was walking around the ring like, yeah, proper happy with himself. The first time he finds himself in a bit of a fight, <coughs> on the ropes like this, <coughs> feeling sorry for himself. Yeah, it's like, well, when you're a bully, if you've been a bully, I'm not saying, obviously, Anyway, the point is, people, the, the point is, the sport's turning more and more into givers. Everyone wants to be a giver now. Not many people really want to be a taker, do they? Yeah, and there's not many bottoms in the game right now. Everyone trying to be a top. No one wants to be a bottom. Yeah? Everyone's thinking, well, if I can't, if I, yeah, I don't, I don't blame them. Yeah? The YB likes his dinner going in one direction. So, the mom, so I ain't criticising no one. Who don't? Ah, oh, why be? Why? No one don't want more. Most dons, most dons don't want their dinner pushing in. Yeah, who who am I to judge? But still, on a serious note, it was a little bit early for the team from me. I'm not sure how much of the round we had to go. But then again, was the fight going to go any other way at that point? No. But I mean, let's. I mean, let me give some historical reference here. When Nigel Ben. You might know me. I use the same. I use the same references most of the time. But I, I've already told you I'm a semi-casual. Never disputed it. But like I was about to say, look at Nigel Ben. When Nigel Ben got knocked out of the ropes in 2022, if that happened, what would we do? Oh, throw the towel in. He he got knocked out of the ring, and it was we had to save him for another day. Do you see what I'm trying to say? You don't know, and I'm not saying that. That guy was Nigel Ben, but it's the same. The principle remains the same. At what point do you just do? You, well, stay at home then. If if at the first sign of trouble we're throwing towels in now, what are we doing here? Because if Nigel Ben would have lost to McLennan, facts. If he had a trainer from 2022, Nigel Ben would have been knocked out of the ring, and the towel would have gone in, and we never would have. It's like, no, no one today, and this fight wasn't for world championships like Nigel Benz was, but where's that inner spirit that says, and it's not the fighter's fault, he did get up to carry on, but including the teams, where's that inner spirit that says, I want to refuse to lose, I want to win, I'm desperate to win. It, it just doesn't seem to be there anymore. It's all about self-preservation. It's all about money, really. They're probably thinking, well... If he gets stopped viciously, he's going to be out for 90 days. If we throw the towel in now, that means he'll only be out for 30 days, so we can have him back. That's all that kind of thinking, man. Yeah, no one's really, de no one's gagging to win these days, bottom line. Yeah, Lil Toonchi, Richard Riakpo's opponent, weren't dying to win. Or his team weren't, or I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what brief he gave his team, but either way, dead, in my opinion. The fight should have been allowed to carry on. Would Riakpo have smoked him? Probably. Yeah. But would McLennan have smoked Nigel Ben? Probably. But he didn't. We miss a lot of them. We, we miss a lot of the top. That's when. You, you, like I said. Everyone today wants to be a top. But. Greatness. And that's what I learned. I used to call Canelo great. Yeah. Up until he fought Bivol. And ever since then. I've come to the conclusion that. True greatness can't be forged when you're winning can't be that's what canelo proved to everyone because we would have said he was great he goes in there with bivol has his first piece of adversity in five years and he threw his toys out the pram and didn't really want to know yeah that's there was nothing great about what canelo did against bivol it was actually pathetic he was a spoiled brat in that fight and he actually tried to take, he actually tried to take the robbery as well to my disgust so where am i going with this well no one don't really want to dig in deep. People want to win easy and lose easy. Yeah. Anyway, fair play to React Poor. Where does he go from here? Allegedly, he is the Lawrence Acoli mandatory now. That was a, a final eliminator, I believe, for Acoli. That's a banging fight. Although, we know both men, Acoli and React Poor, have great right hands. I think Akoli might be a bit taller though. He's certainly more lanky. And that and you know what Akoli is like. Akoli is very hard to beat because he has the most boring style. He will hug. Listen, Lawrence hug Akoli. Will hug the life out of you. Yeah. So I mean, Reactpool's been able to 
do things he won't be able to do with Okoli, like be on the outside in box. You can do that when you're the bigger man. He won't be the bigger, taller, lankier man against Okoli. But that's a great fight. Both men have dynamite. Although, I do have to say, I know I don't want to come across as a bit of a Debbie Downer, but let's not forget Okoli versus Chamberlain. I've got a bit of a weird feeling that it might be one of them ones. might be a repeat where Okoli and Chamberlain go in there. Sorry, Okoli and React Paul go in there and they play a bit of tip-tac-toe and 12 round points. I'd bet on that fight going distance, actually. In fact, that might be a great bet. Because I don't think... I mean, Okoli wasn't able to get stuck in against some random jobber from Europe. Oops. Yeah. And even react poor. Yes, he caught. Yes, he counter-punched the guy running forward. But it's easy to counter-punch. Or I'm not saying it's easy, but obviously it's easy to look good when you're taller. And you can time people coming in. Timing someone like Akoli, whole different ball game. And I'm, I haven't seen... Listen, if if react poor is able to counter-punch him, I, I mean, that would be great against Akoli. Do I see that happening? I don't. I see it being a bit of a... A bum tickler fight. Oh, let's let's both tickle some bums. That's what I see happening, genuinely speaking. I don't see either man looking to take risk because really, they both don't take too much risk. I mean, React Paul isn't as bad as Akoli. Equally, he hasn't fought the same level of opponents as Akoli. So it's all well and good me saying, oh, well, React Paul is more dynamic, but he looked dynamic against more bums, which is normally how it goes. And again... Akoli was looking boring against true bums. When he was coming up in the British level, Akoli was still boring. So I think Re React Paul is more dynamic than Akoli, but I don't really say much. Either way, it'll be a great fight on paper. And let's see it. That's for the bottom line for me. Let's see the fight. Yeah. And if that, if either man wins that fight by knockout, they'll get huge credit for me. Not that it means anything, but I'm just saying that'll be a great win for both men in knockout. Any win on points, I'm not trying to hear it. For me, yeah. When you're that big and you're that powerful, you owe it to the fans to deliver. And I, I mean, Akoli is one of the key reasons I believe boxing needs to innovate its rules. Yeah, the clinch must be banned in my opinion. And no one I'm trying to, and no one trying to see boxing with clinching in. It adds no value, and it also biases the scoring system towards taller fighters. Taller fighters already have millions of points in advantage anyone who box knows when you're taller it's 10 times easier so why are we giving taller people the advantage and allowing them to clinch not to mention it kills the sport entertainment value so it increases the lack of, it decreases competitiveness between the two athletes if you're a smaller man and you keep getting clinched it's like how many how many more things do you want to stack against me yeah so boxing needs to change it up in my opinion and if you want a, a textbook case as to why watch a coley but yeah react poor again did what he's supposed to do he really does have and that's something i give him credit for over a coley he gets the job done in devastating fashion against bums a coley would go life and death with bums 12 rounds and bore everyone to tears but this will obviously this fight will be the the, the fight if react poor knocks out a coley I'll, again, I will, on that fight, I will bet on it going the distance. But if he did, it would be the best cruiserweight by miles, in my opinion. Yeah, because we haven't actually seen Riakpour in a really hard fight yet, I don't believe. And we haven't seen Akoli in a hard fight. Will this be it? I wouldn't bet on it. I'd bet on this fight going a similar way to the Chamberlain fight. Both men come out and their ass does twitches for 12 rounds. But let's see it. And I'll give whoever decides to dominate and put themselves out there will get full credit one million percent but fair play to react poor he did what he's supposed to do with the guy out there today and let's see how his career progresses 100 percent